Good morning and welcome to IIT Bombay. I think a few of our colleagues are just settling in. But meanwhile, let me both invite and introduce to our colleagues uh, two of my co-PIs from uh, IIT Kharagpur, Professor Varshne and Professor Biswas. May I invite them to join me on the dais, please? It is not often that we meet the remote center coordinators physically face to face. Once appointed, they work in the background and the interaction throughout the year in connection with different workshops that we have with remote centers is through the workshop coordinators. Of course, some of you turn out to be workshop coordinators for some of the subjects in which you yourself specialize, but it is not common. Most of the people work remotely. Since the project is completing its second year and there is, it has one more year left, we felt that we should meet you for two reasons. One, we must meet once a year annually anyway. Second, when the project started, we were advised that we should look at possibilities of self-sustenance of the project beyond three years. Because the teacher's training is important, but the government cannot continue funding it in large measures. Secondly, they have to uh, look after teachers from other higher education institutions and also school teachers. So the numbers are very high. And although we have reduced costs as compared to the AICT approved cost per participant for a two-week workshop, they still cannot be met completely by government funding. I had mentioned this at the very beginning that eventually we'll have to work out on a self-financing model. I will share with you some of the thoughts that we have and inform you about the decision that we are taking for doing such experimental workshops within the next year in order to ensure sustenance beyond three years of this work. But more importantly, we have several points on agenda which relate to the conduct of the workshops at your places. While by and large the teachers who participate have benefited and we have got excellent feedback from the participants for some of our remote centers, there have been many issues pointed out by participants, some of which are very serious. So we thought if we could have a day-long face-to-face interaction, we could discuss these issues. We would also like to hear from you the problems that you face uh, while conducting these workshops. And together, we should arrive at a conclusion on how to continue this important project and in fact, a very important national initiative further to help our brother teachers. So without further ado, I would like to kick off this discussion. Uh, all of you have the agenda for the day. When we started this project, I had envisaged establishment of 400 to 500 remote centers. I thought that given that we have 5,000 engineering colleges in the country, it should be possible to have up to 500 remote centers spread in every nook and corner of the country. Unfortunately, that has not happened. We have actually another 125 requests pending, but majority of those requests are from areas where we already have remote centers, and in some cases, very close by. Areas in which we do not have remote centers have hardly any volunteers to take this up. I have raised this with the government, saying that some kind of a imbalance, a regional imbalance is being caused by not having participation from other colleges. However, given that the number of colleges, the number of students and number of teachers themselves are sort of imbalanced in the country, in that there is a much larger percentage of students doing engineering in some states than in the other, it is logical that we would have more centers there. However, 
We continue to strive for looking at more remote centers. IIT Kharagpur has been helping us to identify more remote centers in the east and northeast, but we need to buttress that drive. I will begin with discussion on the issues that we face while conducting these workshops, as I mentioned. So basically, this collaborative activity which we started, let me tell you the background. The ministry's opinion first was that all engineering colleges are committed to both education of students and training of teachers, and therefore, no additional funding support should be required for conducting any such training activity at the remote center. I had to argue with the ministry for quite some time to suggest that when people do work for such workshops, they are actually going out of their way and they are spending their additional time. And therefore, it is only proper that we recognize it by giving a token honorarium to the people who are involved. Similarly, there should be a token availability of money to the institution which helps us run this. Arguably, the main understanding is still that every engineering college is fundamentally committed to spend its own resources in training students and teachers. So the revenue model of any college that you see is that there is some funding given by the college, a large funding comes from the accrual of the tuition fees, and some funding comes through the research grants and other grants that the colleges may buy for. That is the model that even IITs follow the same model, every other institution follows the same model. So given, given this, we had asked for and obtained approvals for a particular financial model. The then secretary, Mr. Ashok Thakur, as I mentioned, said that uh, it's a large project, more than 190 crore outlay, and he says that such large projects cannot be continued to be supported by the government, and you will have to eventually find a self-sustaining model. I talked to Dr. Mantha at length, and what he said is that since IST and uh, AICT certificates are important for the faculty members in their own career, and they are required by regulatory requirement, they are required to do several courses per year amounting to such certification, they should be willing to pay. And there are, in fact, large number of workshops which are held where participants pay the fees. So he says that that is a model that you can work towards. Our concerns regarding the conduct of the workshops are in the following terms. First, the attendance, the actual attendance of people and the attendance monitoring and reporting. Second, the administration at the remote centers. Third, there seems to be some confusion between the remote center coordinators and workshop coordinators regarding their respective responsibilities. So there has been, there is always some overlap, but what we have found time and again is that during the workshop conduct, the remote center coordinator is often missing or not available for any work. It is the workshop coordinator who ends up doing everything. That was not what was originally envisaged. If that was so, then we are okay to go towards a model where we don't have any remote center coordinator, but we'll just appoint a workshop coordinator for every workshop and conduct the workshop. A major problem is about utilization of funds. I will comment on that. Uh, there have been some serious instances. We'll be discussing those independently with some select remote center coordinators. But in general, we have had problems. The most important problem is we do not get back the utilization certificates in time. Please understand that when IIT Bombay gives you the project money, it is always it is an advance. And we cannot settle the entire workshop accounts even if one remote center has not submitted its uh, concluding uh, event. So we have very serious problems because of that. There have been audit objections at our end. I'm sure IIT Kharagpur will also be facing a very similar problem. Last but not the least, we have some serious issues in terms of the technology infrastructure 
and the utilization of that technology infrastructure as per given procedures at many remote centers. These all relate to the use of AVU and therefore we have clubbed all of them as part of the AVU discussion. So first about attendance. So when I had talked to workshop coordinators in the past, they said that the teachers who are attending the workshop do not necessarily listen to them. Now it is obvious that they will not listen to them because they are all peers. In fact, if I am attending a workshop at your end and if I am 20 years your senior, it is unlikely that you as a workshop coordinator will shout at me or will suggest that I should come in time or suggest that I should attend. You have to depend on me doing things on my own. I can understand this, but what I can't understand is that attendance is being marked for people who do not attend. That is patently unethical. Forget other thing. How can a participating teacher say that I have been asked by the principal or director something to do this official duty at this time and therefore I shall be going away. It's like asking for a leave of absence with attendance mark. Even the board meetings which I attend, if I am unable to go for some reason, I get a leave of absence, but I don't get a certificate of attendance. My absence is marked. I don't get honorarium for attending that board meeting. So this is what is not acceptable at all? And this is absolutely not acceptable. We have started tightening things by cross-checking the attendance and we have started controlling the issue of certificates. It is very bad, it's very acrimonious after the fact that IIT Bombay or IIT Kharagpur is forced to withhold some certificates because there is a cloud on the attendance that has been marked. And while the workshop coordinators are responsible for this activity, the fact that we have remote center coordinators, we expect remote center coordinators to ensure jointly with the workshop coordinators, number one, maximum attendance of actually registered participants is recorded, is actually obtained. But more importantly, number two, not a single false attendance is signed. Not a single. I want zero error here. There is a much larger implication that I hope you will understand and appreciate. Apart from teaching technology to our students, apart from teaching them professional practices and skills, we are also expected to imbibe ethical conduct and ethical behavior in them. What ethical conduct and ethical behavior they will look up to if they find that their teachers are routinely involved in falsifying their attendance? So this is simply not acceptable. I want you to carry back this very strong message. There are four sessions in the, in the workshop every day. In each session, an attendance is to be marked. If a single instance, please remember these words, if a single instance of mal recording of an attendance is found, we will simply report the matter to the ministry and debar that center immediately. And there will be no compromise on this. There will be absolutely no compromise on this. In IIT system, we have grown up ensuring that these minimum standards of ethics are followed. And we would expect, all of you would most probably would like to ensure these ethics. You might have your compulsions. I would listen to them when we come to the discussion. But this is not acceptable, period. There have been, therefore, instances, Mantha was telling me, Fatak, how are you sure that a certificate of participation, successful participation, has not been issued to a single teacher who misbehaved. I cannot, I cannot guarantee him that today. And the reason I cannot guarantee that is because your institutions, which are conducting these workshops on behalf of IIT Bombay and IIT Kharagpur, are not living up to the expectation. Now this, this cannot be accepted. This is, we will have to figure out what to do, but this is the, uh, a directive that I am giving to my team and also to IIT Kharagpur team that in case of any suspicion, of course the concerned teachers will not be given certificates, but we will immediately debar that institution. Single instance. 
will immediately debar that institution. It doesn't matter if we have less number of remote centers, but we would like to have remote centers which hold the ethical flag high on conduct of these works. That's the message that we'd like. I hope Professor Vashne and Professor Biswas will agree with this. Of course, there is some casual attitude displayed by some people. The people keep coming in and going out as if it's some kind of a mela uh, in which uh, you can come at any time, go at any time. It is quite possible that somebody is a, already an expert in this subject, in which case he or she should not have registered for that work. Even when I attend a research conference, I might be an expert in that subject, but I sit diligently taking down notes from morning till evening in whichever workshop I attend. If I can do it at the age of 67, I don't see any reason why people cannot be serious about doing things. Please understand that the participating teachers are not merely taking knowledge from someone, they are participating, they contribute. There have been umpteen instances where brilliant questions have been asked. There have been instances where brilliant answers have been given by the participants. Many of the teachers have acknowledged. Now, this kind of interaction has to be encouraged and people have to be told to not to take the casual attitude. In several workshops, in some of the remote centers, we consistently found workshop coordinators missing. We are not saying that the workshop coordinator should be present in the classroom throughout the entire uh, conduct of the workshop for one week or two weeks, every day, every month. We don't, we don't say that. But we are concerned if the workshop coordinator is never seen in the workshop. Now, if there is a problem, the remote center coordinator must intervene. And the remote center coordinator, we expect remote center coordinator to be the overall coordinator of all workshops that are conducted in that institution. Now, unfortunately, this activity of coordination is not seen to be conducted very well by the remote center coordinators. That's the reason we are trying to tell you the problems that we face. So this issue is attendance. I hope, do you all agree that the attendance in a, in a workshop where teachers are given participation certificates, particularly when those certificates are presumably having a value for those participating teachers, then any certificate which has a value like a degree, would you issue a degree to a student who has not attended examinations? Never. So how can we issue a, a certificate to a teacher who does not attend and who does not give all the quizzes and who does not make all the submissions? That is simply incorrect and that will not be done. And I do not care if out of 8,000 registered participants, only 1,000 participants get that certificate. I do not care if the money has been spent for all 8,000 participants, I will answer the audit. But we will not issue certificates for participants who are not serious about attending. That is something that I would like you to just note. These are the ways in which we started discovering that there was some problem with the attendance. You will, uh, some of you will know that I have been requesting uh, colleagues from my teams here as also colleagues from IIT Kharagpur team to visit some remote centers randomly during the conduct of the workshop and report back their findings. This is a way of sort of independently trying to get a feedback. It's not exactly auditing or monitoring, but what many of my colleagues from Kharagpur and IIT Bombay found set us thinking. We found that in a particular remote center, there were uh, 54 or some such number registered and there were less than five people present. The attendance sheet, however, indicated that 54 people had signed. We, of course, immediately terminated that remote center. But can you imagine such things happening? And can you guarantee that such things are not happening to a singular exception? That is, if 33 people are present, 35 people are not marked up present. And presence means what? At the time of signing attendance, if I am present, but subsequently in the workshop I am absent, well, you would agree as teachers that that is not really a presence. Would you admit your students who come to a lab, sign the attendance sheet and disappear? Would you give him marks for the lab? No. So that is how it is. 
We started discovering this when the new version of the AVU. We have now a monitoring facility where we can constantly monitor all the remote centers. And we were aghast to find that in some remote center there are zero people present. Whereas when we see the attendance sheet that is submitted, everybody was present. Now what is sad is this thing happens. But what is sadder is that we need to discover this through technology mechanisms. That makes me more sad. I would expect an honest recording and response. If that does not happen, I think you need to pull up your workshop coordinators. This will not do. And please note that you as well as they, as well as your head of the institution are responsible for conduct of this workshop. A teacher's training workshop in the calendar, annual calendar of the institute may occupy a very short uh, span. But please remember the government is funding that money and if we are spending government money, we are accountable to the public, which is we are, we are paying public money. Please note that amongst the arguments that I had to have with uh, the ministry, a major argument was whether such funding support can be extended to non-government colleges. And I had to argue that Indian citizens study in all colleges. And if our job is to support Indian citizens who are teachers, then we have to support them through all kinds of institutions. I won the argument where they permitted me to make no distinction between a government institution and a private institution. I think that was a major battle that I won. But if I won that battle just to get this kind of thing, then I suppose they will all laugh at me, shout at me, and throw me out for the next purpose. So this, please help me, this should not happen. The participation is not adequate at many places. There are many reasons, but we would expect not only workshop coordinators, but the remote center coordinators also to help garnering the larger participation. More importantly, when the participants come, the general queries, not queries related to that particular workshop or that subject, but general queries regarding to, related to conduct of workshops are not answered. We would expect remote center coordinators who understand the entire gamut of conducting that workshop should be responsive and responsible for handling. In fact, I would strongly suggest that Unless there is a strong coordination between the remote center coordinator and the workshop coordinator, I think there will be always some problems in conducting the workshop. I would request you to ensure that co coordination. After all, it is for reason that I have convinced the ministry to recognize the role of both the remote center coordinator and the workshop coordinator in the conduct of the workshop. Now, the amount of honorarium may not be a very large amount, it's a token amount, but we are honoring the people for their contribution and we would expect that contribution to come. The participants' attendance is not given in time. Unfortunately, how one bad thing leads to another. Because we found a lot of problems with attendance, we have started insisting on signed attendance being given at multiple times and submitted every day. So you see administrative work has increased and for no reason or right. Frankly, for the community of teachers, I should not be required to record attendance. A teacher is expected to be self-controlled, self-motivated, is expected to come. If that happened, half the burden of my teams and your teams will reduce. But because that does not happen at some places, everybody ends up doing extra godagiri of recording attendance and scanning and sending and so on. Sadly, we have no substitute because we are still accountable to AICT, which has approved the IST certificates, we are accountable to ensure that only those people who attend workshops properly and who submit all their assignments are given certificates. We had provided for some TAs. The provision of TAs would vary depending upon the type of subject that you have, depending upon the type of assignments that we have. Unfortunately, and I will make this comment later when I come to the financial due diligence, what we find is whatever is the amount of honorarium that has been allocated for that remote center based on the number of participants and whatever be the number of TAs which fit into that allocation, those many number of TAs are exactly allocated by every remote center, whether they are useful or not. 
In several of our visits by our teams, sadly we found that TAs were not available during the lab conduct at all. Some of the TAs whose names were given, our people interacted with those TAs. And can you believe it? Those TAs had no clue. I, I think this happened in a database workshop when a TA was introduced to one of my uh, colleagues. And he just asked them. The colleague who had gone there, by the way, is not a technical expert. But he happened to know databases and SQL. So he asked him, Acha, where did you study SQL? What SQL programs you have written? He was amazed when that student very nonchalantly asked him, that student here, whatever, sir, who is SQL? <laughs> he was a TA appointed by the remote center. Now, this nonsense is not being perpetrated by participating teachers. This nonsense is happening under your very noses in your own institution. This is not acceptable, sir. This is not acceptable, madam. This is this has to be this has to be stopped. Okay. I might as well comment on the other side. There has been some agreement on the amount of money that is required to cater to the food expenses per day of the participants. We have said that it is natural that the teams which conduct this workshop will also have to eat lunch there and have tea and so on. So I generally said that if there are 30 participants, 30 plus 8 people will be generally having food during the workshop time, etc., etc., and we have allocated some money. Now, let's say 200 rupees is allocated for per day expenses. How come every college, without exception, has exactly 200 rupees as the expenses? Now, this is callous. When we submit bills here, and if I am allocated 200 rupees, and if I pay 190 rupees, I get a reimbursement for 190 rupees. If I spend 250 rupees, then I spend 50 rupees from my pocket. That is the government financial rule. This is a reimbursement. In one of the visits, one of the teams went to a remote center where they, where they talked to the participants and uh, just discussing, we said uh, the government is funding this to the tune of this. And one of the participants says, oh, but this canteen fellow charges only this much. So my representative went and talked to that canteen fellow. He says, huh, sir, we have given this bill to the institute. We came back and checked the bill submitted by the institute. The institute bill said exactly the amount that we had allocated was the bill amount. Now, this is, I mean, uh, uh, this is actually a financial crime. We, of course, immediately terminated that remote center. I simply prevented myself from reporting it to AICT and to the government. In fact, there should be a police case for this. This is a criminal offense. Unfortunately, such criminal offenses are being committed by every remote center in some case or the other. And let me not mince words. These are criminal offenses. We sort of treat them with kid gloves. We have been doing it so far. But that will not pass. Friends, that will not pass anymore. We have to be absolutely honest. Unadulterated honesty is the only expected thing. There is no dearth of money. If you have an actual expenditure, I have had occasions when some people said that, look, we had to incur this extra expenditure for doing this. I have approved that in many cases. And I'm sure Kharagpur also approved that. But please understand that all the money that is being spent by the government is in terms of reimbursement in terms of actual cost that is cancelled. The only lump sum amount that has been paid is the lump sum amount that is paid to your institution for a conduct of a workshop. And I think there is a lump sum amount for miscellaneous uh, expenditure that we pay. Because we cannot anticipate, you cannot anticipate. Generally, that amount was agreed upon in our discussion earlier. And by and large, people seem to be following. Yet, even in that miscellaneous amount, we don't get bills which are less than that or more than that. We get a certificate of having spent exactly the same. Please understand that it is humanly impossible to ensure to the last paisa that exactly the same amount is spent on any budget head. You all have run some, uh, forget projects, you run your homes, right? I mean, when you, when you do a budget for a month for food, let's say, do you spend exactly that much money? 
you cannot you so the ex actual expenditure will always be slightly different less or more it will generally be less but we will not accept this kind of certifications anymore so that is something that we would like you to go back and tell your heads of the institutions there have been more gory instances i don't want to bore you with those i mean it it actually boils my blood when i hear of those but we'll avoid those fortunately those are exceptions for the majority of the people but these are the major issues that we have faced here there are places where heads of the institutions are nominated as remote centers what we have found is heads of the institutions have greater responsibilities in their own institution and invariably you know when you run an institution an emergency can crop up at any point in time so during the workshop time see other teacher the head of the institution will say okay i will not give him responsibility because he or she is uh, participating in this workshop as the workshop coordinator or whatever or participant but as the head of the institution i cannot escape that responsibility i have to handle whatever emergency comes up our advice is that this should be in general avoided so we would like to know very specific reasons from the institutions which cannot find a remote center coordinator other than the head of the institution if we are not convinced we will stop that remote center and go over to some other remote center because we have seen problems coming at some places because it is not always so but it is in general preferable there is another reason by the way the reason is that through these mechanisms we would like many teachers in every institutions to come up and take up leadership roles to come up and organize things and if i am the head of the institution actually i should be looking for taking a younger chap and giving him or her the responsibility of running thing so that that person is trained in the leadership plan so that is what is expected and that is what we would like to do remote center coordinators are changed without intimation to us now we would expect the first information to come from the existing remote center there have been instances when one remote center coordinator left the job which is perfectly fine we are a free country went and joined another institution the head of the institution had forgotten that there is something called a remote center coordinator she did not do anything with a lot of interaction we got a new remote center coordinator appointed but we did not know it in time i think if i have been given the responsibility of a nomenclature it may not hold very great powers or anything but that's a responsibility then the responsibility also includes my intimating to iit kharagpur or iit bombay that look for this this reason i am no more a remote center coordinator either i have left the job or somebody else has been appointed and if you know who is the new person the new person's name also should be communicated because our contact point primarily in the institutions still remains the remote center coordinator of course during the workshop time we interact with the workshop coordinators many remote center coordinators are absent during the workshops again this is fine the workshop coordinators are what we expect to be present because that is the subject specific workshop but a remote center coordinator being completely absent throughout the entire duration of the workshop is not very is not very fruitful so there should be at least some intimation that look i am the remote center coordinator at such and such place all mechanisms uh, all uh, have been properly executed registration is done the workshop will start on such and such date however i am required to be busy in this 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 thing therefore i will not be personally present during the conduct of the work a two line note would be sufficient we do not get any such note from any remote center so we would expect remote center coordinators like the workshop coordinators to kindly keep everyone informed then we will know that in case of an emergency remote center coordinator is not available we have to contact the head of the institution directly or expect the workshop coordinator to take up the additional responsibility now the last one names of staff keep on changing for the certificates and for for fund settlement this is something the names can keep changing before the beginning of the workshop how can names keep changing after the end of the workshop this is again uh, uh, fiduciary impropriety this is not proper i cannot insert a name after the completion of the workshop 
and say that this fellow was actually a TA paying him on a name or we are paying him on a name. If that TA was present during the workshop, then during the workshop, the attendance would have been marked. So far we have not insisted, but we will now be saying that the attendance must be marked for all the staff which participate in the workshop as well. Because without that, we have no proof of people who actually participate. We have had instances when the workshop coordinator and the senior technical person who conducted the lab were not shown as recipients of the honorarium. We, of course, have heard very funny stories that in some institutions honorarium is not paid or if paid is collected back from the from the people that is horrible i don't want to uh, i don't want to know more about it. it it is just horrible if that happens i think it is not that we should close down that remote center but i think the government should be recommended to close down that institution itself it, this is this is unacceptable callous behavior unheard of in most academic institutions across the world, only in India seems to be happening in large numbers. But that is something that I cannot help. I will listen to you in private in case you wish to discuss these possibilities because we get anonymous letters, but we do not know what to do about such things. We even had, uh, you know, we followed a method of ensuring that fund transferred in the accounts uh, should, be, uh, should be shown to us, etc., etc. So it's very, it, it has resulted in a very peculiar thing. One head of the institution told me, Fadak, why are you increasing my administrative work? So the good institutions which do everything properly find this very amusing that extra work is being required by them. The bad institutions which are not doing things properly, okay, hate this process. But they are smart enough to find alternatives to this process. So apparently money is deposited in the account, suppose, uh, he, is, he is the person who has done the work and the honor name is to be paid to him. I am the head of the institution. The money goes into his account, his account book. I take a Xerox copy, whatever, submit it. IIT Bombay, IIT Kharagpur is happy. Next month I tell him, boss, wo institute ko itna paisa, ye account mein wapas kar do. Now, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about it. Uh, I think it is beneath our combined dignity to comment on it. But if this is happening, this has to be stopped. And this has to be stopped by people within the institution. This cannot be stopped by external agencies. IIT Bombay and IIT Kharagpur are not going to take responsibility for overall better financial behavior of the institution. That responsibility has to be discharged by individual institutions. It is not that mistakes do not happen. They, have, they could happen at any place. But by and large, this is something that should not be accepted. The registration in some of the remote centers has been very low. It is quite possible that there are not enough teachers in that region for a particular subject for which the workshop is announced. We have located a few problems in this low registration. One of the problems is that if the workshop is not announced well ahead of time, then there could always be an issue. We have decided that the workshops for the summer will be announced pretty much in this December month itself. And we will have adequate time and we will additionally support information dissemination to all participating teachers ahead of time. But additionally, the remote centers themselves will have to, will be expected to do their own due diligence in informing neighboring institutions and other teachers to participate. The second point is very important. Somehow many participating teachers feel that this training workshop means they just have to attend, meaning just sit there. We have insisted that in every workshop that we conduct, we do exactly the same thing that we would do in IIT if teachers come here. Namely, that they will have to give assignments and quizzes exactly like other students give. Now these assignments are of two types. One is the regular online assignments. The second is assignments that are to be submitted post-workshop. There are some cases where post-workshop assignments were submitted, but the workshop coordinators did not upload them, and therefore we could not uh, send them certificates. But this certification is dependent upon successful completion of quizzes. There are some teachers who have said right at the beginning, 
that we will not sign certificates for participants who score less than so many marks. And that is also correct because after all, if I'm being certified as an expert in some subject X, then I should demonstrate some definitive competence in that subject. And that demonstration can only happen through quizzes and assignments. There is no other way. After all, we, we examine our students in exactly the same way, isn't it? We don't give students, say, 65% marks if the student has just attended all the classes. The student has to give exams, do assignments and so on. There are instructions which are given to the workshop coordinators. I have suggested to my team that the instructions be copied to all remote center coordinators and a written receipt by the workshop coordinator and the remote center coordinator should be obtained. A receipt, not financial receipt, but a joint email or joint letter which says both of them have read the instructions and that they undertake to follow them. I think this simple fact will force all our remote center coordinator friends to at least look at the instructions which could be specific for every workshop. They may change from workshop to workshop. As I just mentioned some time ago, the guidelines that are given are not followed. So there are several participants who submitted their assignments, but the workshop coordinators did not upload those assignments. And as a result, Professor Kameshwari Chevrolu refused to uh, sign the certification. So uh, she said, this is not all. In fact, she had put very stringent conditions of even passing and then uh, submission of assignments, etc., etc. And frankly, there is nothing wrong with it. There will be some lenient teachers, some strict teachers, and those who conduct the workshop, they define the modus operandi. And if they have defined the modus operandi, which is defined up front, then it has to be followed exactly like. I come to the last but most important thing, concerns related to funds. So late settlement and no proper documentation. And I will tell you that if now onwards, if I receive settlement amounts, which are exactly the amounts that have been approved, I will go back and ask the local police to investigate the bills that have been submitted. Now, I, 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 I'm, I'm very serious about it because this friends cannot be permitted to continue. Now, there might be some compuls external compulsions, whatever it is, but you have to fight against this. This is not all. This is just not all. So, uh, be very, very careful about it. Late submissions will immediately result in suspension of that remote center. I'm having a PRSG meeting very shortly, but when I talk to people like Professor Nigwekar and others who, even Ramadurai, who is on our PRSG, we have got stalwarts to assist us. They are the ones who are sort of telling us uh, how to go about it and how to handle things and so on. So they are saying that while your penchant is to get more and more remote centers, you must also insist on the right functioning of the remote center. Otherwise, without any hesitation, stop those remote centers. It does not matter if you run only with 50 remote centers and train only 1,000 people. That is perfectly fine. So this kind of thing will not be acceptable. There are honorarium issues. There are multiple honorariums which are taken by the same person claiming to have played different roles. It is possible that sometimes it may happen. But in one particular case, we found, I will not name the center or the person, the same person claiming to be the remote center coordinator and the workshop coordinator, whereas we knew that the workshop was actually conducted by someone else. Because during the conduct of the workshop, my faculty had interacted with that remote center and the workshop coordinator was different. So when I located that and I said, there seems to be something funny here. So my team said, sir, that is why we have come to you. So we wrote a letter saying there seems to be some discrepancy because as per our records, this is the case. We got a sorry letter with the change. Now this is, I do not know how this happened. So do the papers which come to us pass through remote center coordinators at all? The remote center coordinator sends them to us. So remote center coordinator is singularly responsible for the certification that you give. 
and again i am not mincing any words i hope to avoid this but if by chance if i am required to initiate a police or cbi inquiry it is the remote center coordinator whose signature is there on that paper please make sure that what you sign is both correct and accurate and is as per proper procedure otherwise i do not want any one of you friends here to get into unnecessary trouble because you bowed down to some pressure internal that is not all we we must we must behave correctly for it is required and we must also behave correctly because we are going to be role model like it or not our students are smart they hear words they see things and you know in every generation students have always been smarter than the teachers when we were students did we not believe that we are smarter than the teachers we did the current students behave exactly the same way and they actually are they are more street smart and they may have a stony face when they talk to you but they see they think they make assumptions and they make conclusions and that is where it is important that our behavior be scrupulously perfect the honorarium to support staff is paid through cash payment in spite of the instructions again there is a problem i have met some uh, uh, institutional chiefs who say that it is silly for us to write checks for small amounts he asked me one question fatak in iit bombay aren't there any cash disbursements done i said there are a few but most of them we do by account transfer to the bank because that is the easiest mechanic but in some institutions where the automation level and connectivity to bank is not so much there may still be any cash payment the reason we were forced to state this is because of the problems that we found elsewhere so i i suggest we if you have any opinions on these issues i hope you are making notes either mental notes or notes but when you come back for discussion i would expect you to tell us exactly what what are the issues that you you face related to these things we seek solutions for doing this